So we need a stereo instrument track. I start off with an instrument track, and, and then we'll put the rewire plug in on. And for that, we just choose the door that we want to use. We're using Reason this morning, and I tell you what, Aaron, just for you, I'm going to use three and four instead of left and right because that's just makes more sense, doesn't it? Um, now then, Reason hasn't opened up. Is that because I've already got it open? Yeah, I've already got it open. Okay, that's fine. Right, okay. Let's park that. Alright, now have you noticed? That there says rewire slave mode. So at the top in the top left of the reason interface, it usually usually that would say like for us it would be audience ID fourteen, yeah. Or it would be built in output or whatever. That says rewire, so that tells you that that's working. That's the first place to look. If you're not sure if Reason and Pro Tools are talking to each other properly. So that's the first place to look, because then you know that Reason is acting as a rewire, and as Aaron talked about at the very, very start, in slave mode, okay? Right. Uh, okay, I'm just going to pop a subtractor in there, and, oh, what have I forgotten to do? I've forgotten to put the 14.2 mixer in. Now, I normally do this just to simplify things. So there's our 14.2 mixer. And there's our subtractor. It's automatically wired the subtractor into the 14.2 mixer. We've seen this before, so I'm not going to go through it. And uh, I want this to be one bar pencil tool. There we go. Right. Ten points. Anyone who can tell me why we don't hear anything? Because before. I, plug, uh, we, I did exactly the same workflow. I pressed play and we heard it. Change the plug. Yes, excellent. I've changed the channel on the rewire plugin. Therefore, if we go back to reason, we have to look up the top here and we have to hit tab. Okay, this is the master section. We plug that into three and four. There it is. Um, you'll get them later. Right, okay, so let's get a more interesting sound. It's quite an interesting sound. Okay, so if we just trace where the signal originates from, uh, we've got a MIDI clip here which is being sent to the subtractor. The subtractor is converting the MIDI signal into an audio signal. The audio signal is then being sent from the output of the subtractor to the input of this 14-2 mixer on channel 1. The output of this 142 mixer then goes to this mixer one channel, which we know is linked to ah, this channel, mixer one channel on the big bastard mixer at the top of reason that we kind of know about but don't really want to use too much yet because there's just a lot going on. Um, nevertheless, you can use it if you, if you want to. Um, let's just get rid of it. And that mixer is linked to this master section in some way that we don't really need to worry about for the minute and the master output from that master section is going into the audio output section in Reason numbers 3 and 4 which are linked by Rewire Magic to that plugin. That plugin is on that channel and therefore when I hit play <laughs> that happens. I wonder why that's happening. Let's go back and have a look. I've discovered in my experimentation that occasionally this rewire process has a little bit of a problem with things that start right at the very, very start. If I move this MIDI clip, tell you what I'll do, um, unsnap it, and I'm just going to move it what we might call a Midgey's Tadger away from the start. Go back to the start. See it worked. Huh? Right, and have you noticed something else? I'm pressing play in reason here. Yeah. So although Pro Tools is acting as the master and rewires reason, sorry, is the slave. We're kind of getting the audio from reason into Pro Tools. I can still press play in reason if I want to. I can still, if I zoom out a little bit, I can move um, these left and right indicators. Put snap back on make a little bit more sense and it'll start from 
the, the playhead will start from where I've moved it to. I can put loop on, so if I've got loop switched on, I can put loop on in Reason. Yeah, so that's looping round and round. If I turn loop off in Reason. I could have sworn I turned that off there. Oh, let's turn it back on. Right. 11 points this time. For anyone who can tell me why that keeps switching itself back on. Yeah, absolutely, Tamsin. 11 points for Tamsin. If we go back over to Pro Tools and we have a look at our transport window. There. Got Loop Play turned on. Now to turn it off, we can just control click here. If I go back to Reason and it's turned off in Reason. Go. Hit play and go uh, right, let's get rid of this. We don't, we don't have a MIDI clip in Reason. But that's fine because we can use one in Pro Tools and we can send the MIDI from Pro Tools, from Pro Tools to Reason. Josh. Yes. Been waiting weeks to get to this bit for just for Josh. Okay. Um, because he likes the Pro Tools MIDI sequencer. Right. There's a MIDI clip. Don't judge him. He just he likes what he likes. All right. He, we've got a Pro Tools MIDI clip. All right. Let's forget that. We've got a Pro Tools MIDI clip. Um, on our instrument track, I'll just zoom out a little bit here, um, it's the same thing, it's a C3 for one bar, because I'm really, really inventive when it comes to um, programming MIDI clips. Quickly, we need to send that MIDI clip to the subtractor in Reason. How, how am I, how am I going to do that? The output. Which output? And that's how we send it to Reason. The subtractor that we're using in Reason is called Epic Chip Lead, because that's the name of the preset. Okay, um, Ben. I'm going to call it Ben. Let's call Ben now. There we go. Now it's called Ben over here. So we can send that MIDI to Ben. There we go. And <laughs> let's see if I can prove something which I believe to be true. Okay, so we're sending MIDI from Pro Tools to Reason. Josh, you happy? Good, good man. All right, now the last stage of this is to harvest, for want of a better term, that audio signal. And it's stereo, isn't it? So remember, this is an instrument track. It can output audio. You can't record audio on it, though. Only, only MIDI clips can live on an instrument track in Pro Tools. And I'll probably just call that Rewire. And then I'm going to choose the first bus as the output. We know all of this. I'm going to choose the same bus as the input to that audio track. Record arm it. Okay, that's better. And now we've got that as an audio track. If I solo that, there's our audio clip. Okay, so the second learning objective is to move audio clips between programs. So um, we're going to look at how to export a clip from Pro Tools. Um, in, and then how to import it into the Reason Sequencer and the Reason Sampler. Select the clip, press that disclosure triangle there, and what we're going to do is export clips as files. We've only got one selected here, so that really should say export clip as file, singular. But nevertheless, it's export clips as files. Hit that, and then you get a bunch of options. File type, format, choose interleaved. Okay, So interleaved means you've got two channels, a st two channels making a stereo file interleaved, yeah? so you get one file when you output it. If you have it in multiple mono, you end up with two files. Yeah? We just want one. So we want one interleaved file. Let's do 2444.1. It asks you where you want to put it. Um, and it defaults here to rewire here. That's the session folder, the Pro Tools session folder. And then the audio files folder. That's not what I want to do. I want to choose, instead of the audio files folder, I want to choose the bounced files folder so I can separate those two things from each other. All right, let's export it. Now let's go to that location, which was the bounced files folder inside of Rewire, and have a listen to it. Yeah, okay, so now we've got an exported audio file, okay? So it was this audio clip, which was two uh, mono files played back on a stereo track 
this is two different files. I'll show you that actually if I put in two mono audio tracks and then move those two clips to two mono tracks. Yep. So that's two mono clips which you can put on two mono tracks if you want to or you can put on one stereo track. We bounced that to its own file so that's an interleaved stereo file. All of that is a preamble to say that we can put it into Reason. Great, okay, so now, if your session exists on your desktop then you've got a quick way to get to that bounced files folder. So for me the session folder is called Rewire because the session is called Rewire and we've got bounced files and there's the audio track and we can we should be able to preview it but it's not previewing why isn't it previewing ah it's not previewing because we've got this rewired at the minute all right so let's just let's just forget about that for a second we don't really need to worry about it at this point we can drag this audio file directly into the sequencer at the bottom there and now we've got it in reason okay okay what else can we do? Well, if we just get rid of this for now. Just make this a little bit bigger. Different instrument this time. This time I would like a NN19 sampler. Just get rid of hot swap or whatever they call it in reason. I call it in hot swap because that's what they call it in live. I don't know what it's called in reason. Um, so hot swap in live and, and whatever they call it in reason is so you can really quickly change your preset in any device without going into a menu structure. So I'm just going to route this sampler into channel 2 on the 14.2 mixer. Um, I'm going to reset this device. We've looked at this before. Yeah. I'm going to reset this sampler so that it's an empty sampler and it's waiting for a sample of some description. As you've probably guessed, the sample I'm going to use is the one that I've just exported, which is in that bounced files folder. And now I need to send some MIDI data to that sampler. Oh dear. Now why did that make the smallest MIDI note ever known? Let me just change this. Okay, the console tool. There we go. That's what I want. Okay, so what we're hearing now is the audio file being triggered within the sampler. Okay, just to prove that. We can filter it with the inbuilt filter on the sampler. What else can we do? Let's get the LFO on. We're just going to look at, in fact, I'll probably just show one reason effect. I mean, this is the next obvious stage of this, isn't it? Once we've got audio files, which we have exported from Pro Tools and imported into Reason, either into the sequencer directly or into a sampler, the next obvious stage of that is to use some of Reason's effects um, to change them in some way and then send them back to Pro Tools.